The, sec the last half of your book mm -hmm. um, mainly focuses on love and relationships. Um, and again, I felt very kindred to you because I feel like I am so smart and I can do a lot of things really well, but this love thing. <laughs> if, if I, and I skipped kindergarten in real life, so I feel like if I had to, if I had done it, maybe I could know how to kiss a boy and <laughs> not worry about anything, but I felt comfortable in your freeness when you found that after your divorce. I felt comfortable in your mistakes, your um, bad choices, um, because you wrote about those um, and the epilogue was at a point of even this is still a continuing process mm -hmm. that that finding and loving and being loved and evolving in love because I think for those people who are out of their 20s I think that is a big <laughs> challenge is that you can find someone to love you can love that person, but does love work outside of the dining room when you have to go and face things? And when you were married, a part of your journals was about living someone else's life and encompassing their their systems when you're trying to you know become yeah. who you want it to be. Yeah. Um, so the thing that I took from that, the formative thoughts of an activist and the evolution of a woman. Mm -hmm. So oh, I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is what I think this is. Um, when it comes to love and women who believe enough that they act on it, because I think there's difference. I think there are people who believed in the civil rights era, but they never march, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They believe in freedom for women, and the, but they won't say anything. They mm -hmm. won't call. So for those women who are moved to move, mm -hmm. and not that every woman is supposed to, um, is there a balance in loving another and loving the cause? The cause of feminism, you mean? Whatever you, your cause is. For you it was feminism, but for, for anything that you believe so strongly in <coughs> that you move because of it. I think so. I think that, um, that who you love can't really be separated from who you are. Mm -hmm. And what, what is moving you as a, as a political movement or as a way of, of approaching your life can't be separate from the, the object of your affections. It has to be um, that part of what you're doing is moving forward and then including another person in that forward motion. Gotcha. Not saying, okay, I'm moving forward over here, but I'm gonna stop and go a little left because he's doing this. Right. You know, but to right. find someone who's also <laughs> moving in that direction and then see if you can figure out a way to move forward together. Okay. But I think it's that part of that same thing about apologizing is that many of us have that feeling that we have to be defined by someone mm -hmm. and that we're prepared to make all kinds of compromises mm -hmm. uh, because of an abstract idea about look, what love requires mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. saying, no, that's, that's an abstract thing. What do I need? Right. What do I want from right. another person? And I, I used to... Um, between the time I got divorced and the time I got married again when I was dating, which is really weird to start dating again when you're like 30, when you haven't been on dates since you were like 18. Um, but I was already becoming a feminist and I knew how important it was for me to have the men that I was dating and was getting close to understand what that meant because I didn't want them to think they were gonna be able to behave in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually for a while had a book list and I would say, you know, I love that we're going out and having a good time, but you need to, you need to read this. We're gonna go to the next level, you need to read this. And people would be like, have you lost your mind? But it was okay because if they were prepared to put the time in right. to read, like, say, okay, these books are really important to me and changed my life and my idea about men and women, about what can happen between men and women. And if you care for me, then you need to understand this because we're going to have to walk this together. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, I met the man who I eventually married, Zaren Burnett, who is my husband, um, and he read all the books on the list <laughs> and, and wanted to talk about it. You know, it wasn't okay. like, okay, I'm going to skim through it. Right, right, right. Right. He was like, his book was like yours. He right. had underlined stuff. <laughs> he was talking about things and all of that, and that meant everything right. to me. Because that meant that it flipped the dynamic that we often have mm -hmm. between men and women, where we're asking them to please tell us and teach us and all that. Right. And he was saying to me, this is something I don't know anything about. And he 
hated not knowing about ah, him because right. he wanted to know everything. Mm -hmm. right? He's that kind of person. Right. And the fact that I was talking about things and reading things that he didn't know right. made him want to catch up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when he read all of those books and was prepared to talk about it and right. was prepared to listen right. to me as the expert on this mm -hmm. particular question, mm -hmm. I said, well, now we have, we have an interesting future if we can keep this level of dialogue going. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to do that, mm -hmm. you know, to really continue to talk about it. But it was because at the very beginning, um, I was so committed to not making the same mistakes I had made gotcha. that I was like, okay, if y'all don't read these books, that's fine. But I'm going to find somebody who will. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm going to be by myself. Because I'm fine by myself. You know, I'm, I'm good by myself. But if somebody's going to be with me, which is lovely, I want it to be me that they're being with. Exactly. So they don't look up like the thing I have in the, in the book where my mother was, you know, a young woman and she went to the movies with a guy. And so this must have been like in the... I was born in the late 40s, so this had to be like early 40s, right? right. right. And they had gone to the movies. In the middle of whatever they were talking about, the guy turned to her and said, you're not one of those women's livers, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, yes, I am. <laughs> Last date they ever had. But it's, it's that. It's that okay. willingness to say, this is me. Right. If you're going to fall in love, I want you to love me who I really yeah. am. Mm -hmm. Don't love this version I'm presenting to you because I'm trying to lure you in. Right. I want right. it to be me. This is right. what I look like. This is what I sound like. Right. This is what but, you know, this is me. The and stuff. then then if you fall in love with me, it's like, great, you love me. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you don't have to fall in love with me. Right. We can be friends. Right. We can right. meet for coffee. Right. But if it's going to be more than that, right. then you have to present to the person who you are so that the person they're committing to is who you really are. So then two months later or six months later right. or two years later, you're going to say, this is too hard to keep up this charade. Let me tell you about me for real. Right. <laughs> Right. Start with right. real, and then it, then it becomes richer as opposed to a betrayal at the end, like, why didn't you tell me? Like, who are you? Right. <laughs>